As predatory king of Amazonia, the giant otter can choose from a huge variety of fish. But below, there are other predators also eager to take advantage of this variety and abundance. The one meter long peacock bass is a top hunter in the flooded woodland. To hide from predators, some fish use camouflage. One of the most effective is the leaf fish. But there's a double advantage to its disguise. By drifting like a fallen leaf, it not only hides from its enemies, it may also hide from its prey. predators among the fish of Amazonia, but there is none so expert as this ancient hunter. A fully mature Peradocu is three meters long and weighs 200 kilograms. It's one of the largest freshwater fish in the world and a masterful predator. It quietly stalks the unwary and then snatches its prey with blinding speed. Nothing is safe from its enormous mouth. Victims on the surface are sucked in with a rush of water and air that's then expelled from its gills. ancient predator has survived for about a hundred million years. During this time, it has endured and survived great upheavals of the land and enormous disruption to the flow of the rivers of Amazonia. The flooded forest is also home to another relic of those upheavals. The Amazonian stingray has venomous stinging spines on its tail. Its ancestors once swam in the Pacific Ocean. The 20 species of stingray still found here provide a clue as to how Amazonia was created. It's thought that the rivers of Amazonia once flowed west into the Pacific Ocean. But tens of millions of years ago, Enormous geological forces buckled and pushed up the land, cutting off the sea and creating the Andes Mountains. The young mountains dammed the rivers of Amazonia, which formed a vast, low-lying network of lakes and wetlands to the east, where stingrays and other marine species became trapped. Around five million years ago, further upheavals sloped the land eastward until the waters finally burst through into the Atlantic, creating the new Amazon River. But even to this day, the flatlands of Amazonia drain slowly until finally, after months of flood, the region enters its dry season. It's been four months since the first rains fell. Water levels have now begun lowering 
as floodwaters slowly find their way back into rivers that haven't been seen for half a year. The creatures of Amazonia must now confront a new and even more difficult challenge. If you are adapted to wet, how do you survive the dry? By September, the long dry season is now entering a critical phase. As the hot sun dries up the pools, many river dwellers suffer. The small pools are now stagnant and have little oxygen in the water. This causes great stress to the many fish confined here. As the water evaporates, many fish die. During the floods, a water monkey or arowana lived in two worlds, hunting insects among the branches. Now it dies, just another fish out of water. At the end of the dry season, scenes of death are attended by black vultures. Although there is water, it has little or no oxygen left. In pools and ponds across Amazonia, fish die in huge numbers. To survive, species must somehow survive seasons of wet and dry, and finding a deep pond will certainly help. The giant Piraracu uses an ancient strategy to endure the harsh, dry season. It is one of the very few fish that can take air directly from the atmosphere. Piraracu can breathe. In fact, without air, it will soon drown. Long ago, the ancestor of the Piraticu evolved a lung-like organ. It gulps air from the atmosphere that is absorbed into its bloodstream as if through a lung. This remarkable ability helps Piraticu to withstand the long dry season an ability that was developed during the drastic changes of Amazonia's long history. During the ancient past, other Amazonian fish developed strategies to help survive difficult times. And during the dry season, these become very useful. During the flood, the tambaki gorged on nuts, using powerful jaws to crack them open. Now there is nothing to eat. It rests on the bottom of the pond. The tambaki can survive these months of starvation because it has converted the nutritious nuts into fat. Beneath its skin, the lower third of its body has a thick fat layer. And as it waits out the long, dry season, it slowly consumes its fat reserves. In the Tambaki's deep pond, a similar strategy is used by a much larger animal. The Amazonian manatee is the only manatee in the world that lives in freshwater throughout its life. But in the dry season, very few water plants grow. There's very little to eat. Like the tambaki, manatees gain weight during the wet season. But now during the dry, they must live off their fat reserves. 
While most manatees are losing weight, this one's belly is swollen. It's a female, and she's pregnant, and will give birth when the rains return. As the water in the rivers of Amazonia recede, numerous lakes become isolated from the main flow. In one of these cut-off or oxbow lakes, a family of giant otters enjoys easy hunting because the fish are confined and have nowhere to escape. This giant otter family group has been hunting together in the deeper parts of the lake. During the hunt, some family members drive fish towards others that lie in wait. Some months ago, the giant otter family set up their burrow or holt on the edge of the lake. And now, three new members are to be seen. After two months in the burrow, they're old enough to come outside and splash about in the shallows. The pups will grow up with not only their parents to look after them, but their extended family of older brothers and sisters will also continually look out for their safety. The otters share the lake with some unfriendly neighbors. The caiman, the South American alligator, grows two meters long and is dangerous. If this one gets too close without the otters noticing, it could take one of the pumps. It's been spotted. Most of the family takes to the water to chase it away and the mother quickly moves the pups back to the safety of the burrow. Having chased off the one that came too close, the otters now evict all came and anywhere near their part of the lake. They make snorting sounds as a warning to the caiman. Their whining sounds are a contact call between members of the group. They have little fear of the caiman and harass it until it leaves. The otters claim priority over the lake. They move about freely and hunt wherever they like. As the day ends, the family gather. Cayman are no longer a threat and it's safe for the three pups to come out and join their older brothers and sisters. Otters, like many other species, time their breeding to the seasons of wet and dry. During the dry, these pups are dependent on their mother. But in a short time, they will be big enough to hunt for themselves and that time will coincide with the return of the wet. Finally, in November, the cycle of equatorial sun and wind 